Hi, I'm Ross from Coombe Smith Chartered Accountants in Hamilton. We're a firm who specialise in property accounting. First thing, just disclaiming a little bit, this is general information, so it's not for your specific circumstances and you should get specific advice before taking it. Our question for tonight is, should you sell a lemon? So the first part is, what is a lemon? Basically, it's a bad property in a bad area. Um, it's got no potential, it's got bad cash flow, and it's basically a property you wish you'd never purchased and you wish you never owned. So the first step when we know that we've got a lemon is to gather some information. The first bit is to get a real estate agent to give an appraisal um, of the value of the property. From that we find out what the property is actually worth and how much you can sell it for. So that's really key. You might think your property is worth 300,000, it might actually be worth 350 and that might change your whole decision. The second thing is to get a rental appraisal. Uh, you might be renting it for 300 a week, the real market value might be 400 a week and that again might solve your problem just about that. So it's really about getting more information so that you can make an informed decision. Also looking for opportunities, can we add a room? Can we add a minor dwelling onto the back to get more rental income? Can we subdivide the property? Um, a lot of these things you can discuss through with your real estate agent and see if there's potential to add value and add extra income. The other thing you need to look at is your major expenses. So interest is the biggest cost. Can you review your interest rates and can you save some money? So can you go from floating to fixed for one year or can you restructure your portfolio to make it more effective for your loans? Also other expenses you can save. The obvious one is property management. Is that something that you can do yourself and reduce your costs? Just be really, really careful. A lot of people are not good at property management and actually struggle to do it. So just, just bear that in mind. Then you need to do the numbers. So we need to know exactly what is the property costing you per year um, and what are the true figures for it? And what is your annual cost? So just some basic numbers for a standard rental. If you're getting $300 per week, work on 50 weeks a year, you're getting $15,000 income. All your expenses coming out, and the main one is interest on the mortgage, um, so I'm working on 6% interest rate. Just be really aware that interest rates could well go up and most commentators are predicting that they will increase. So our total expenses are 25,000. We've got 15 coming in, 25 going out, so you're losing close to $10,000 a year. Then we've got a few extras that we can add on for tax. So you might get a little bit of chattels depreciation, which brings our loss for tax purposes up to almost $12,000. If we can offset that against a higher income earner, you're saving about $3,800 a year, so it brings your overall cost um, from a cash surplus, $9,500, less tax benefit, costing you about $5,800 a year. So that's the key statistic that you need to know, or the key number that you need to remember, how much this property is really costing you per year. The next thing is to guess how much capital gain you're going to get. And none of us have a crystal ball. There is no perfect figures or numbers to work on, but here's some basics. Over the last 20 years from REI and Z stats, property has gone up 6.3% per year. Um, inflation's 2 to 3%, so if I have a really good property, I generally work on about 5% to be conservative, sort of between the two. So if we keep the, that example property for the next five years, we know that the annual cost is about 5,800. So for the next five years, it's gonna cost us $28,840. But obviously interest rates could change. So we're also thinking that there could be some extra, extra interest in, that, in those figures. Capital gain, we're looking at, it's probably a bad to average area, otherwise why are you you're looking at getting rid of it and why is it a lemon? So maybe you're looking at 3.5% capital gain to be quite conservative. So we're looking at an increasing over five years, 52,000. So bringing in a 10 year equation with this, um, we need to be sanity tested. Uh, in 10 years, is it really going to be worth 405,000? Um, your cost is probably going to be about 80,000. So therefore, we're spending 80 to get 105,000 potential gain. 
the overall decision is, is it better to get rid of this lemon or get rid of this property and buy something else, or is that money well spent? Just to go back and just clarify something a little bit better, when we're looking at this equation, we're looking at getting 52,000 of gain over five years, we're looking at spending 28, realistically adding in some higher interest costs, that could easily be 40. Um, so we're looking at spending 40 to hopefully get 52,000 extra. So it's reasonably tight, there's actually not much in that. Um, so just to sum up a little bit, what you need to look at is what that potential capital gain you're expecting over five, ten years compared with what, what the cost is going to be. And just bear in mind that cost is real, um, whereas your capital gain you're guessing. So in this sort of equation, those figures are actually reasonably close in my opinion. I would look more at selling it and spending the money elsewhere rather than holding on to this and effectively gambling that the property is going to go up in value. Um, thanks for listening into this and yeah, if you want to have a look at our website there's some great information on there and you can also sign up to our newsletter to get property tips and tricks. Thank you.